guys, it's Jules. Welcome back to my channel. Today's lighting is brought to you by my fabulous bathroom because I am going to be coloring my hair pink again. So, but basically, I'm just going to be walking you through my process of coloring my hair. Granted, I am not going to be bleaching my hair today because I only have a little bit of roots going on. Uh, and I like to leave a little bit more room up top for bleaching if I'm going to be bleaching my hair. So I also feel the need to disclose that I am in no means a hair color expert. I didn't go to school to like learn anything about hair. A lot of this has just been things that I've just tried. So take it with a grain of salt if it's not right. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and give it a thumbs up if you end up liking it towards the end. I'm hoping this won't be too long of a video. So if you would like to know how I get my hair to be more pink, go ahead and just keep on watching. So the first step in coloring your hair is to gather all of your supplies that you're going to need to do that. I did purchase literally everything from Sally Beauty. Uh, I want to say probably in total, if you want, if you didn't have any of the stuff that I already have, it probably costs like less than $40. Uh, I would suggest getting like their little membership thing and do that because it helps save you money. So this is the hair color that I'm going to be using. Uh, this is my favorite pink hair color that I have found mostly because it says permanent hair color. A lot of, um, Fashion colors are demi-permanent or semi-permanent, which to me just doesn't last as long as permanent hair color. So that's why when I found this, I was really excited. So I've been using this hair color, maybe not this particular color, but this line for at least the last year. And I really like it. So um, this color can be really vibrant when you're using it alone. So I usually pair it with this. So this is, it's called a pastel clear mix-in. So it basically just makes whatever color you're using more subdued. So that way it's not like, cause I personally, I'm not the kind of person who wants to have crazy, crazy pink hair, but I guess people tell me pink hair looks kind of natural on me. Sometimes I don't really understand what that means, but um, I guess if pink looks natural on me, then I guess I'm doing okay. Um, so, but this is the color combination that I use. Sometimes I do need three. I do have like kind of long hair. Okay, I don't really have long hair, but it's like mid-length. Um, you're just gonna need however many of these uh, depending on how long your hair is and how thick your hair is too. You're also going to need some developer. This is the developer that they recommend you use with that particular hair color. It is the same brand and it's um, they just want you to use 10 volume. If you use anything more than that it's just gonna be way too harsh on your hair and cause it to break. Next, I highly suggest getting some gloves. These are reusable gloves that I got from Sally's. They're just black. Um, I don't know. They just, you know, unless you want to stain your hands pink, you could do that. Um, next is a wide tooth comb just to kind of distribute the color more evenly. I also use um, like a little whisk to mix all the color together. And then this bottle isn't necessary, but... Personally, I like this because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of me because it's really going to be hard to see, but there it has all these measurements on there. Uh, so I basically can measure out my developer or whatever I'm needing and just pour it into the bowl that I'm about to show you uh, just so the color is in the right ratio. And then I also use a hair color brush and a bowl, which did y'all know pink is my favorite color? Did you know? So those are all the supplies that I'm going to need for actually coloring my hair. Now, before you actually color your hair, you are going to need to get in some clothes that you like absolutely hate. Um, this is like an old work shirt that I'm sure you can see I use for hair color. And um, so you're just gonna need to wear clothes that you don't really care about. You're gonna need to take anything out of the bathroom, like on, like carpets or anything like that, that you don't want to accidentally get any color on because it is a lot easier to get color off of tile or linoleum than it is out of like actual fabric. So now another step that's really important to me is making sure that my hair is straight and not like first day straight, maybe like two or third day straight because I'm not the kind of person who washes my hair every day. It causes a lot of damage and because I color my hair, it takes a lot of the color out whenever I wash it. So uh, this is, I want to say third day straight and I'm you know, was planning on washing my hair today, but I also wanted to color it. 
So having it somewhat straight is really important to me. So uh, I also just make sure I brush it before I start coloring my hair as well. So that way it's just a much smoother process. You're also going to need to have some clips. It doesn't really matter what kind, if you want to use hair ties or whatever, in order to separate your hair so that we, you can, I don't know, just get the color more even, I guess. That's, that's what I think. So I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and prep my hair. I like to brush it, you know, right before I'm about to apply color to it, but uh, I wanna go ahead and have it sectioned off before I start mixing color. Don't you just love that feeling of having like freshly brushed hair? Okay, so now that my hair is all brushed, I'm going to take a top section right here, clip that up. Okay, and then I'll do kind of like the middle section, clip that up as well. This is a very fabulous process, guys. So now that I got it all sectioned, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing my hair color. I'm gonna go ahead and put on those gloves because now it's the chemical part. So I'm actually, I think I'm just gonna use two of these for right now. It's always really difficult to try and figure out how much color you're actually gonna need, which is why I ended up buying two of these and just one of these. Uh, it really doesn't matter to me like how intense the pink is. I guess it'll eventually fade anyway. But um, I am going to go ahead and mix these two together along with the developer and see how much product is in the bowl. And then I'm going to decide whether or not I need to add more of from the other bottle. So these are just kind of like your standard kind of tubes. They, you know, they're sealed. And so you take the lid and puncture it, pour it into your bowl. You always want to make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area just because the fumes from hair color can uh, do things. One time I think I actually ended up being high off of hair fumes. Don't recommend it. Always make sure if you're using the whole thing to get like all of the product out. That way you have like the accurate fluid ounce amount that it says that it has in there. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you keep your instructions. You know, like don't throw them away. Um, and so this says that I need to use one part, uh, the hair color and then one part developer. So, um, so this has two ounces of color in it. So that means I'm gonna be using two ounces of this, but since I use two of these, I'm gonna use two, four ounces. I'm good at math, I promise. <laughs> This is where that little thing comes in handy. So um, I'm gonna make sure I see where four ounces is, which is about halfway. Okay, and just pour that directly in here with this. Okay, and then I'm gonna use that whisk. Just I like using this more than I like using a brush because the brush, I feel like, can get coated, I don't know, unevenly. So, that's just a personal preference. You can kind of do whatever you want. Okay, so this is how much color is in there. There's really, I don't know, I don't feel like this is a whole lot. So, actually, I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit of the, the other bottle of color. Because I'm using a little bit more from this, I am going to measure it out in the same thing that I just used for the developer. So that way I can have an even amount of the color, the new color and the new developer. So I think I only want to use about half of this, so I'm just going to put this in here until it says one ounce. So there's one ounce and then I'm going to use the same thing and just make make sure I use the same amount so another one ounce so two ounces total I would rather have a little extra color than not quite enough if you end up needing more color when you're almost done with your hair and you don't have enough hair color it's a lot harder to come up with the same concoction of like the amount of stuff that you used at the end so right now this color it's really hard to tell with the lighting I know I'm sorry but this color is kind of like it's kind of like a pinky 
I mean, it's, it's really, really, really light pink and I don't want that to discourage anybody because this, trust me, once this gets on my hair, it's going to turn a much darker shade of pink. I can tell you from experience. Um, but, um, it doesn't always turn the same color in the bowl as it does on after it develops in your hair. So I like to go ahead and rinse everything off so that way it can already be ready for the next time. Okay, so next, next I'm going to go ahead and use the brush and um, I mix it in just a little more just to get the brush fully coated and then we're going to start putting it in my hair. So I like to just split it down the back, something like that, and then just start putting it all over my hair and I like to put it up to the root so um, so that way even though it's not really going to be coloring my root as much it's not going to be drinking up as much color as the lighter part in my hair um, I still want it to look cohesive so I put color in my hair and then um, I'm kind of like massaging it in to make sure I get it in on all of the hairs. So this is also where it's very helpful to wear gloves. It's also probably a pretty good idea to keep some paper towels handy just in case you get any on your arm or anywhere else for that matter. Uh, just so it's a lot easier to clean up. I'm probably going to need to do that here in a minute because I didn't grab any earlier. I feel like I really don't use the brush so much to apply it to my like full length of hair. I just like put a clump of it in on my hair and then use the gloves to really just massage it in. And I also, I also rub down there just to make sure I get all the little baby hairs. So now before I bring down the next section of my hair, I do like to use the brush and get the section, you know, I know what I'm talking about. You, you can see what I'm doing, right? Just kind of brush it up in there so that way, it's cause it's a lot harder to get once you've already like pulled your hair down. So this, since it's a larger section, I'm going to divide it up a little bit more. See, look, you can already see that bottom section right there is getting quite a bit darker. So I want to make sure I get all of this up in here, especially because it's so close to my face. I feel like you'd notice a lot more if it was patchy, right? If it were right here than if it were in the back. And this color is okay if it does get on your skin. It does wash off fairly easily. It doesn't stain it for very long. But if you do get it on your skin, I do try to, if I get it on my own skin, I do try to kind of wipe it off as soon as I can but if it gets like on my face or like on my ear I'm not really stressing about it so um I'm basically just massaging more color in, making sure it's more it's all saturated so you can already see how pink it's getting it's really important to make sure it's saturated in this part of coloring instead of when you're like pretty much all done because then it's harder to find those drier spots that need more color Okay, so now that I have a larger section of my hair that has color in it, I'm gonna go ahead and use that brush. Even though I am massaging it in, I just wanna make sure it's even more even. And it is not very easy to brush your hair while you have hair color in it. So just don't. <laughs>
All right, and we're gonna go on to the last section. So this section to me is a little more complicated than the other ones um, just because it's the one that you're gonna see more than anything else. So uh, I, this is what I like to do. So I have that top section I already did while it was at this. I'll just create a section right here that's a straight line. But so I'll get a section like this and just start applying the color this way. Bring it the opposite direction just to make sure you don't miss anything. And just like when I was going through sections here, I'm going to do the same thing with when I'm separating it this way brushing it on one side. You don't need to really do small sections. You could do, well not big sections, but they don't need to be super tiny like the section I made was actually a little bit smaller than it needed to be, but it's okay. Okay, so now once I've gotten done getting it all in my hair, I. I kind of like to massage it, you're probably not supposed to do this, but like massage it into my scalp because I want to make sure that I got every little bit. So it's kind of like, you know, washing your hair with shampoo. So now another thing I like to do, and look about how, this is how much I have left. This is, I mean, it's... Not a lot. I don't have quite a lot left, which is fine, but I like to, you know, make sure I got everything in the front here. Okay, so I'm going to take that brush again and also just kind of start kind of, no, I don't need to brush it all the way through, but just making sure that it's all nice and coated. I'm gonna put a little extra at the crown of my head because I feel like I always forget <laughs> some spot right there. I'm probably being a little over meticulous with making sure that it's all over my hair, but I've just been through so many times where I miss like a really big spot and that's never good. Especially when you put in all this work to color your hair and then having a, spat, a patch, oh, it's the worst. Okay, so now I'm just gonna let my hair sit for 30 minutes, which is what this says to do. So before I, um, I need to set a timer, so that's really important, so you set a timer. And then um, I personally like to go ahead and start cleaning up. So that way if you did get color anywhere, like in your sink or anything like that, it doesn't stain it as quickly, I guess. And I make sure to wash off those gloves that I was using. These gloves are really nice uh, as long as you wash them off. I, I like to wash them off while they're still in my hands so it's kind of just like washing your hands. And then um, I make sure that whenever... I try to dry them off with a towel but they still are a little wet. I make sure that they, I leave them out and so that they can fully dry so I can use them again because these gloves actually last quite a long time. Oh, I also want to mention. So I still do have some color left over. I am going to keep it just, just in case I did miss any spots in my hair um, throughout this entire process. I probably won't need it, but I do just want to keep it before throwing it away. I try to get all the color out as I can with just plain water and make sure that it's cool, not warm, not hot. It doesn't need to be cold, but I mean, I guess you could if you like cold, but it just needs to be cool water. And then I rinse it with, uh, I do, I just do regular like shampoo and conditioner. Um, I already use a color protecting 
shampoo and conditioner. So if you don't have something like that, I would suggest that. Um, and then I guess I'll just meet you guys after I've done all that. Okay, so I just got out of the shower and I did want to mention something that I guess um, may not be something that everyone does. Um, I wear one of these hair wrap things uh, whenever I'm washing my hair and I wear a shower cap whenever I'm not washing my hair, but um, I typically, since you want to wash your hair in cooler water, I don't like taking cool showers, so I'll do my hair really fast or however long it needs to sit in my hair, um, any of the products. Um, once I'm done washing out all that, I will stop my shower, put my hair in one of these um, towels, and then turn my water up to a temperature that I can tolerate to like wash the rest of my body and everything. Um, and it also just helps prevent um, warm water coming into contact with your hair, which would eventually just make it fade a lot faster. So um, that's just something that I typically like to do. Um, if you feel like you want to do it, cool. Um, so, so this is where we're at right now. And as you can see, a lot of that hair color that was like on my face or anything like that did not stain. Thank God. Um, I don't ever really have problems with that, but, um, with that, with that hair color. Another reason why I really like the hair color that I used is it also doesn't stain my pillow at night when I'm sleeping on it. Uh, I don't go to sleep with wet hair, so that may also contribute to it. I have had times where I have fallen asleep on my pillow and um, when I was using a different hair color and I woke up and there was color all over my pillow. So um, just to avoid having to get new pillowcases, this color is good and it's not very expensive either so um so now um really it's kind of simple after this uh I spray heat protectant in my spray I may not style my hair today because heat does take away your hair color in general so the less heat you can use on your hair the better uh, I'm really bad at it so that's why my hair fades a little bit faster because I like to have straight hair and my hair is naturally curly but if you can if you can let the your hair sit and air dry after you've colored it that's probably the best so that way the color can still that's still in your hair can get really really down deep into it and make it last a lot longer in the long run uh, so Personally, today, I'm I'm not really going anywhere. I'm not going to do anything, so I'm not going to blow dry or straighten or curl my hair. When you are using heat on your hair, you always want to make sure you use a heat protectant. And then I actually just got a new one today as heat protectant that has color protection in it as well, which is, you know, going to help prolong the color of your hair so that way you don't have to color it as much. I personally only color my hair about uh, once every, like, two to three months, just depending on where I'm at with... Uh, how the color has lasted and um, how committed I am to wanting to have darker colored hair. And just in case you were curious, this is the color protectant that I just got. It's a leave-in protector um, from Ion. You can get this at Sally's as well, which is where I got it today. I also went ahead and brushed my hair just to make sure the color is all even and everything. And I guess at this point, you could just kind of peek in there and see if you missed anything. Luckily I didn't miss anything today. So um, I don't need that color that I had left over. I could just go ahead and throw it away because it does not last. You can, it's going to go bad basically so it's not going to do anything for you if you keep it. But if you do end up having patches in your hair after you've already gotten to this stage you are going to have to either wait till your hair dries or go ahead and dry your hair and apply the, the mixture onto dry hair because I feel like whenever you apply it to wet hair it's more diluted in a way. So I just wanted to show you guys in natural lighting what my color is starting to look like now that I'm letting it air dry. It's not as dark as it looked when it was all wet with the dye and everything but I love it. So this obviously isn't the most flattering hairstyle but this is my hair pretty much completely dry and the color and everything. I'm so excited! 
So that completes today's video. If you do have any questions that I didn't answer during the duration of this video, please go ahead and leave comments down below and I'll be sure to get back to you about them because I'm sure I missed some stuff, even though I try to be as in-depth as possible. Um, but if you could also give this video a like if you liked this video and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Here's a shot of Bailey while we're waiting for my hair color to sit because you know she's going to be in all my videos.